She's been in the background waiting since about 10 to 10 this morning, but here she is. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. The most patient, the most patient woman I know. Good morning. It's great <laughs> to have you here. Um, Thank you. We are running two minutes late. Oh, wait, you'll still get your 10 minutes, Alana, I promise you. So Alana's here to speak about Fame Ed, um, our national charity for um, Black, Asian, minority ethnicity teachers within the system. So I'm going to stop talking, hand over to you, Alana, and I'll be back in 10 minutes to ask you some questions. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Hannah. I think one of the main things I need to say is welcome to you all and thank you for taking the time out on your Saturday in order to be here and to receive this information. It's really important that we all as a community are a part of everything that's happening within education. So a short quick history of BayMed. So in January 2017, um, BayMed Network went from an idea to a conference. It started off as an idea between a conversation between two people who said, what are the chances of me making it into a headship? And that then evolved into us deciding to do something about it. And it's a conference. And we started with just the desire to drive ethnic representation in schools and in school leadership and to support more people from global majority heritage backgrounds into careers. And that was our driver for quite some time. And it worked really well. We ended up making a national impact to the extent that we evolved into our own charitable status. So we're now established as a charity. But seven years in, we've had to have a look at ourselves and analyze where we are, what we've done and what's the impact and how are we genuinely making change? So we at BMED, we have renewed. We now know better and therefore we seek to do better. And what I'm gonna share with you now is about what we've discussed as going to be part of our new embrace around education and what we want to change within it. So the BMED network is now all about changing access, understanding and power structures in education. We want to make sure that everyone who comes into education is welcomed and they find a space where they find that they are heard, they are healed, and they are honored. So we want everyone to know that they have a voice and that their voice has power and there is a network behind them in order to encourage them to use their voice in that individual situation, as well in the wider scheme of what is happening in education. We want everyone to feel healed so that all the trauma that you will experience, and trust me, I've been in the trenches as well, still am in them. You will experience, have those negative experiences. That there are spaces that you can go to in order to get support. When someone in your school isn't listening, that's not the end of your network. There is an entire network built to listen to you and to help you and support you through those parts, to help you heal. And to celebrate all the excellence that is happening, it is great today to hear so much from all of those organizations and the incredible work they're doing, not to mention what Hannah has been doing with Diverse Ed. So how do we ensure that those spaces are there? Where you can come as you are with a potential and ambition of who you want to be. Well, first within our network, we work with those who are racialized as white, as well as those who are racialized as black or global majority heritage. We work equally with both. We are powered by volunteers from the diaspora, as well as those we refer to as our active allies. And the reason we do that is because when we look at the balance of power within education, we recognize that there is a need to harness the power of allies so that there is change. It's not so much about finding a space at the table as in expanding the table and having those people in positions of power who can change that conversation and bring the recognition that we sometimes cannot do for ourselves in those spaces. We work with people who might identify as bystanders, those who think that, well, race doesn't affect me. Being different doesn't affect me. Education will be fine no matter what we do. So we work with them in order to bring change and start to shift their thinking. And that has widespread impact within the sector itself. So it's work with governors because they're the ones who keep on appointments of headship and the strategic directions of schools. We work with large organizations, education organizations in mass. We work with recruiters at the grass level. And at the grassroots, we work with all of our other groups. 
We try never to refuse a phone call that has the potential to support positive change. And I can tell you, there are people who I've just spoken to over the phone just to help them through that one situation. And that's what we want to do at BayMed. We want to help people practice change and understand the need for change and as well drive and become and remain active within change. Our flagship program that we're actually well known for is our coaching and mentoring that is provided for any person who is of a GMH background, um, you are entitled to three free coaching or mentoring uh, sessions. And we ensure that all of our coaches are well trained. So there is an actual training program that our mentors go through and our coaches go through. And we ensure that we pay them. So we and through the donations that we get to our charity, we are then able to pay them a stipend because we do believe that people should be paid for the work that they're doing. But that is of no cost to you, the end user. So please do utilize it. And there are many different ways that you can. So maybe you're going through a situation at work where you need to have some counseling and someone to speak to. We're able to provide you with some light level coaching that will help you think through the situation that you're in. Maybe you're going to apply for a post and you want someone to talk you through what the process is going to be like and help you practice those questions. Having confidence when you're going into your applications is always a really important part of what you need to do. We will are there, and that's what our coaches and mentors are there to do. In addition to that, we are in work in partnership with Teacheru, and we provide a jobs board. Now, our jobs board, we are now refining, and we're moving it towards providing all the teaching jobs that are available in England and Scotland. There, you will be able to access those schools that have shown a commitment towards hiring diversely, and that will be promoted through our network. We will also help to prepare you for those interviews and ensure that your application has a strong chance of working when you go into those spaces. We organize some events. So we do work with the Festival of Education and we are celebrating our eighth birthday in January in, at the University of Wolverhampton. So please do come along if you want to come and celebrate with us. We have the Anti-Racist Educators Festival that happens in Wales, as well as another festival that will be happening in Bristol. So we have all those flagship events, as well as those that are hosted online in partnership with others. We, have, we are launching our new and revamped uh, newsletter that's going to host all the information that we have about what our network has done. And we have hubs that are established all across the country. So our hubs, which are in Bristol, London, Wales, east of England, northwest, as well as those that we are refurbishing and revamping that are going to be in Yorkshire and Humber, as well as the southeast, Bedford, Bucks and Hertfordshire. So if you're interested in getting involved, please do visit our website and or email us at baymed. Uh, BMED at Outlook.com, BMED Network at Outlook.com, and we will be able to get in touch with you about working with our hubs or working through our hubs. Now, at BMED, we've also had to change the way that we operate. So we are known as a repository. We have lots of research and the projects that are identified on our website. And you can find lots of information that are responsive to issues that are happening within our society. So when the riots occurred, we ensured that we had a repository of resources that schools could use in order to speak to students, staff, and establish systems within their schools around what happened in the riots this summer. But we want to be much more than that. So moving on from just being a repository, we're moving into the area of research and our focus for this year is going to be on SEND. We are looking at how we have moved from the, idea, the ideas of subnormal to the idea of invisibility within UKME or GMH background and heritages within SEND. And we're looking at how SEND manifests within the sector, how it's managed within the sector, and how we can do better, because that's what we always seek to do. How do we ensure that all of our children and our teachers get a much better experience? We're also launching a bit of research that's going to look at whether there's safety in supply. We do know that within Wales and some other and some parts of the UK, that if you are of global majority heritage, you are more likely to be languishing in supply teaching than you are going to have the safety of a school. We want to be able to change that practice and see what work we can do around there. So as you can see from my short presentation, there's a lot that we're looking at within the BMN network, but ideally we are a charity that is based around the teachers and the sector and the people and the allies who want to make change within our sector. 
I think it goes without saying that everybody recognizes the need for change, but feeling safety and security within making that change happen is something that only we can put forward for us, for our sector. So we are active as in our volunteering capacity, we are active in making sure that that happens at every point within our network. So please do go to our website and have a look at the work that we're doing and get involved. We're here to support you and we're here to ensure that the ladder is never pulled up and we're always supporting others. Brilliant, Alana. Thank you so much um, for the update. I met Alana 10 years ago when we started Women Edge. Oh, and yeah. just to see what you've done and what you've achieved as an organization in those eight years, it's it's really impressive. And I, and I appreciate when we get to like five, six, seven years old, we have to do a refocus and a reframe. Um, yeah. So the, uh, that, those three H's, heard, healed and honoured, that really resonated with me about actually like, what are we actually doing to make that change? What are we actually doing to impact the experience of the global majority? How did you come up with those three, those three kind of like commitments? <laughs> I do have to say it was Magpied from a friend of mine, Tia Gaines, who runs the uh, Leaders Like Us Global Network. And when we met um, at a conference, she was speaking about, well, what are the things that we as, and in the US they refer to people of color, what is the things that we don't get within education. And we found that one of the commonalities was we don't feel heard, we don't um, feel healed, and we definitely don't feel honored for everything mm -hmm. that we're doing and the work that we do. So that's one of the things that we've also looked at and said, yeah, that's one of our driving manifests. We wanna make sure that everyone has their opportunity. Yeah, I love that as a commitment. And I want to pick up what you were saying about supply, because we know we have a lot of global mm. majority educators who join us from the Caribbean, from, from, from yeah. Africa, and they end up in that supply market. And they probably end up in some of the toughest schools and some of yeah. the schools where there is more racism. Tell me a little bit more about that safety in, in, in supply. So we want to first look at why is it, what is it that's driving people towards supply? We hear no end about the teacher shortage that is occurring across um, the sector. And then we hear about a lot of people going into supply, even from the ECT stage, ending up in a supply with a supply agency rather than being able to um, apply and secure jobs. So we have decided we're going to have a look at why that is happening within the sector itself, what we can do to support more supply teachers so that they can get into permanence and have that stability within their posts. And how do we ensure that they feel safe within those supplies? So working with those schools and working with some of the recruitment agencies themselves who place supply teachers into schools to ensure that there's an anti-racist focus and strand that goes through those schools before they place teachers who come from global majority heritages into there. At the end of the day, everybody wants to feel safe when they go to work. And we feel as a network, it is our job to try to ensure that in as many spaces as possible, we can make sure that they're safe and that they have some where they can respond yeah absolutely because i'm thinking about the mm. different reasons people end up being in supply it could be their new arrivals to the country and they yep. don't even know how to navigate our very complex system and way of being recruited it could be mm. they've had a really bad experience in a school and they don't want to be stuck in one school or yeah. it could be i'm just thinking about um the bias auditory bias that comes up quite a lot around accent and language and yeah. the perception of how someone's someone's command of English is that something that's come up around people with regional accents or international accents it is it is something that frequently comes up where suddenly people aren't can't understand so they look they don't look at the quality of the teacher they just look at how anglicized the teacher has become and that cannot become one of the criteria that we have within education and it has to be something that we work really really hard against and that's what we're trying to put forward and ensure that all those people who are in those positions of power so those who are doing the recruiting those who are looking working in the schools those who are heads of department that are supporting those teachers in the classroom that they're making those statements really clear to students to other members of staff that it is the quality of the teacher that is in front of them that is the main concern and that's what we need mm -hmm. to look again mm -hmm. as you know hannah we need to get more people understanding that we live in a global society and it's diverse mm -hmm. communities and the contribute the cultural contribution that they can make has to come with some level of cultural humility from the people who are doing the recruiting absolutely and i love that accountability about mm -hmm. like how the supply agencies are looking after the supply teachers but also yep. holding the schools to account how the recruitment agencies i know there's been a big piece internationally a log yeah. has really yeah. held the international sector to account for removing like names and faces from CVs because a lot of the UAE schools want a picture. 
to show yes. you why or, or a name to show you why yep. so there's how do we how do we tackle that bit how do we tackle the the way we do recruitment in the UK currently for teachers if someone is really really committed to ensuring that they have a diverse field they can do blind recruitment that's absolutely fine if you want to be blind but blindness doesn't always get you to the aim that you need sometimes you have to be deliberate in your actions and then say if we don't get a diverse field we're not shortlisting we have to go back we have to make sure that we're recruiting differently we have to make sure that we're advertising differently we have to go to spaces where people are so that they know that our school is safe it's not just we're sitting back this passive approach that we take in uk education so we take a really passive approach to the people that come to us and then we take a very challenging hammering approach to them during the recruitment process itself. So you go to interview and you get hammered with questions, you get hammered with activity. And in that one day, they want you to showcase everything you can do without ever looking at the potential behind someone. So what is it that I can develop you into? Because if you are one of the greatest schools and you're outstanding, then you're able to grow outstanding teachers. And if you are saying, well, you have to come to me ready-made, well, then you're not as outstanding as you claim you are. So we have to get back to the point where schools want to grow students, but they also want to grow their teachers and build their understanding. And they recruit on basis of potential and they recruit deliberately, diversely, because that's the places yeah. where it's successful. You have to be deliberate in your action and blind recruitment does not always achieve that. No, you're absolutely right. And, and just before I let you go, because I went to a presentation mm -hmm. last year that Teach First had done where they've changed yeah. their recruitment model and they now recruit for potentiality. And it's yeah. significantly increased the number of global majority applications they have, but also the number who get onto the course. Um, so so in it's this, a different perspective, isn't it? Sorry, go on. So in the school where I was head, uh, we, re we tried recruiting differently as well. So we would have a teacher, we would let them do a 15 minute lesson. We'd give them feedback and then ask them to do that lesson again. The teacher that can understand and listen to feedback is a teacher that you can grow and a teacher who will understand. And that's what we looked for. We didn't look for, oh wow, that was a really spectacular lesson the first time. We look for, can you listen to the feedback and can you respond to the students in front of you? We need to change what we do in education. I completely agree. Well, well done to you and the team for the brilliant work you're doing um, as a charity. I'm going to send out all the links to all the websites for everyone to find out more. Um, and good luck as you go into your, into your ninth year as a charity. I'll see you soon. Thanks for joining us. Right. Thanks. Take care. Cheers. Bye.